Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Bradycardia. Bradycardia is when the heart rate or heart rhythm is too slow, with fewer than 60 beats per minute, and this can cause sudden death, as not enough oxygen gets to the heart. However, some people may experience a heart rate slower than 60 beats per minute at times, and it is not necessarily cause for concern. There are a number of causes of bradycardia, which include hypertension, a congenital heart defect, tissue damage from aging, heart disease or heart attack, myocarditis, hypothyroidism, imbalance of electrolytes, obstructive sleep apnea, inflammatory diseases, and some medications. Some symptoms of bradycardia are dizziness, shortness of breath, feeling tired, chest pain or fluttering of the heart, confusion and trouble concentrating, a drop in blood pressure resulting in fainting, lightheadedness, or loss of consciousness. Some signs of bradycardia are hypotension or low blood pressure, orthostatic hypotension or a drop in blood pressure after changing positions, like going from sitting to standing, sweating, pulmonary congestion or edema, meaning an increase of fluid in the lungs, congestive heart failure, or when the heart does not pump enough blood, and premature ventricular contractions, or PVCs, which is when the ventricle produces abnormal heartbeats. There are four types of ECG rhythms associated with bradycardia. The first is sinus bradycardia, and it starts in the SA node with a decreased rate of fewer than 60 beats per minute. It is slow, but regular heartbeat. The second type of ECG rhythm is first degree AV block, and this is when the PR interval is prolonged and is more than 0.20 seconds. The third type is second degree AV block, which is divided into type one or Mobitz one and type two or Mobitz two. The type one second degree AV block is when the PR intervals are prolonged the R intervals are shortened, and finally, one beat drops. On the other hand, the type two second degree AV block is when there is no change in the PR interval, but a beat will drop. The fourth and final type of bradycardia ECG rhythm is third degree AV block, which is a complete heart block where the P wave and the QRS complexes are not connected. Now, let's consider a scenario. You are a paramedic who arrives at the house of a patient who has collapsed. The patient's wife tells you that her husband was having difficulty breathing at first and then grabbed his chest and collapsed. First, assess the situation. Check the patient for responsiveness by tapping and shouting, are you all right? Look at his chest for any movement. When you check the carotid pulse, you note that he has a pulse and is breathing. Prepare to transport the patient to the nearest hospital. You then hook the patient up to the monitor and identify the rhythm as bradycardia or under 60 beats per minute. Now start with interventions. Maintain the patient's airway. Help with breathing and give oxygen if the patient is hypoxemic and monitor their oxygen saturation. Monitor blood pressure and heart rate and conduct a 12 lead ECG and diagnose the patient. Check for persistent bradyarrhythmia. For management of the patient at the hospital, if bradyarrhythmia has been diagnosed as present, then administer atropine at a dose of 0.5 mg via IV access and repeat up to a maximum dose of 3 mg. Atropine should be used as a first-line therapy for bradycardia. If atropine is found to be ineffective, apply transcutaneous pacing or administer dopamine at a dose of 2 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute via IV access or administer epinephrine at a dose of 2 to 10 micrograms per kilogram per minute via IV access. If the patient is showing poor perfusion, transcutaneous pacing is crucial to obtaining a normal heart rate again. 
Even though atropine is the first-line treatment for bradycardia, if the patient has severe symptoms of bradycardia or is crashing, then it is critical to start transcutaneous pacing. You should start TCP right away if one of the following happens. The patient does not respond to atropine or atropine does not work in the patient, you cannot get IV access, or IV access is taking too long, or if the patient is deteriorating quickly. Once the TCP has been initiated, you must ensure that the patient's heart is getting proper electrical shocks from the pacer. Give analgesics and sedatives to help manage pain, especially in patients who are alert and stable and consider that it is even preferable to administer these before the TCP is initiated. Make sure to continuously monitor the patient to check if there are any improvements. Lastly, remember that if TCP is ineffective, then you should start an infusion of dopamine or epinephrine and get the patient ready for transvenous pacing. Make sure to get a professional consultation. To see the algorithm showing the management of bradycardia in more detail, please consult the chart in this section. This was the chapter on bradycardia. Please proceed to the next section of this course to learn more.